When I first got to Gombe, the big problem was that chimpanzees are very conservative. They had never seen a white ape before and they would disappear silently into the forest. So the biggest problem in those early days was to overcome their fear and gain their trust. And that was done through patience and persistence. Like you go in the field every single day. What is a weekend? It doesn't exist. And you go into the field every day, first thing in the morning, and you stay out until the evening. And you write down everything because you never know what might be useful. So my supervisors, when I got to Cambridge, were trying to persuade me that I should focus on a particular behavior. And that was ridiculous because we knew nothing about chimpanzees then. And how could you pick out what was most important? Because specific behavior occurs in a, in a context. And if you don't understand the whole context, well, there's no point. The one that shocked me most, horrified me most, was that chimpanzees like us have a dark side to their nature. Mm. And just like us, they're capable of extreme brutality. And on the other side, it's been amazing to see the extent to which there is compassion and altruism um, among wild chimpanzees. First, when I had been with the chimpanzees one and a half years, I was told by my mentor, Louis Leakey, that in order for me to get money, to stand on my own feet in the future, I needed a degree. I had no degree of any kind, but he told me that I had to go straight for a PhD. There wasn't time for a BA. He arranged for me to go to Cambridge University in the UK. Uh, I was the eighth person in their history to get a PhD or to sit for a PhD without a first degree. So when I got there, I was told I had done all my study completely wrong. It was a shock for me. It would have been scientific to give the chimpanzees numbers rather than names. I couldn't be describing their personalities or their minds or their emotions because those were unique to us. In fact, I was guilty of terrible anthropomorphism, which is attributing human-like behaviors to non-human beings. Well, I thought back to the teacher I had as a child, and that teacher taught me absolutely animals had personalities, minds, and emotions. In fact, he taught me so much about animals. And that teacher was my dog, Rusty. Hmm. Gradually, the scientific community came to understand that there isn't this sharp line dividing us from the rest of the animal kingdom. But it took a very long time and there is still some resistance today among some scientists. But basically those scientists who, who do not wish to admit that animals have personalities and above all feelings are those who are engaged in some kind of invasive research. Mm. And of course it's not only scientists, it's other others who are involved with animals in a way that is extremely unpleasant from the point of view of the animal. Uh, there's a huge amount of abuse that goes on every day involving millions of animals around the world. For example, intensive farming of animals for food and the use of animals in entertainment, sports hunting, and we could go on for a long time. In fact, you know, since the time when I began studying chimpanzees in 1960, 
we've learned so much more about the closeness of the biological relationship. Actually, the latest DNA work suggests that we are more than 98% similar in our genetic makeup. You could have a blood transfusion from a chimpanzee. They can catch or be given all our known contagious diseases. But most interesting for me is the fact that the brain of the chimpanzee human is almost the same, it's just that theirs is a bit smaller. And what's obviously fascinated me is all these amazing examples of chimpanzee intelligent behavior in the wild and, and also in captivity. So, for example, we even believe that chimpanzees show primitive cultures because the tool using behavior is different in different places where the chimps have been studied. And so it's um, pretty obvious that it's, it's obvious that the um, the young ones learn by observing the older ones of their community. And one definition of human culture is behavior passed from one generation to the next through observational learning. So they demonstrate so many behaviors, intellectual behaviors, that we used to think unique to ourselves. So I think that, that basically it helps us to understand that we humans are not separated from the rest of the animal kingdom, we're part of it. We're not the only beings with personalities, minds and, and emotions. And so once you realize that there isn't this distinction of humans from all the other animals, you start realizing how very, um, how unethical our, be our human behavior is to other animals. And of course the tragedy is that we're not ethical towards other human beings either. Different people can do different things. It really depends who your man in the street is. But the first thing I think for the man in the street, if he wants to help, is to actually find out the facts and find out exactly what's going on. There are various things that can be done. People can contribute money to those organizations that are really out there in the field fighting to preserve animals. People can volunteer uh, for such organizations out in the field or in an office. And they can, they can uh, lobby, they can write letters to legislators and try to change laws. But the main thing, if you care, is not to keep quiet. Let your voice be heard. My mascot, this is Mr. H. Mr. H was given to me by a man called Gary Horn. Gary Horn went blind when he was 21 and when he was recovering, he met a magician and decided to learn magic. Yeah. So everybody said, but you can't be a good magician if you can't see. He said, well, I can try. And he's so good, the children don't know he's blind. And then he'll say, you know, things may go wrong in your life, but you must never give up. There's always a way forward. And he's one of those crazy blind people who climbs mountains and jumps out of aeroplanes. So he gave me this for my birthday 14 years ago, thinking he was giving me a stuffed chimpanzee. So I said, Gary, I know you can't see it's the wrong color, but I said, you have no excuse. I made him hold the tape, Jim, and he said, never mind, take him where you go and you know my spirit's with you. So we've been, this is our 63rd country in 14 years.